CataractCoach.com. ASCRS case number seven, dense cataract tricks. And yes, you still have to learn SICS. So here's our case. Got a dense cataract here. Pearl one, make that Brexus big, at least five millimeters, maybe even five and a half. Heck, I don't even mind six. Get that nucleus partially prolapsed out of the caps or bag, plenty of viscoelastic to coat the endothelium, and get that chopper behind that posterior plate. So the reason I tilt the nucleus partially out of the caps or bag is I want to trap the nucleus between my chopper and the phaco probe so I can exert more force. I don't want to rely only on the vacuum holding power because that's not going to be enough. I want to trap that nucleus so I can really exert the power to break that posterior plate, that rubberiness, the fibrous part of it, and we can really get this cataract resolved pretty easily. And notice how I also recoated the endothelium with viscoelastic multiple times. And use a good viscoelastic here to protect that cornea. We also want to use good phaco power modulations. What does that mean? Well, you can't just use continuous mode. You should use a burst mode or a pulse mode. Don't know the difference. We'll go to cataractcoach.com, not just YouTube, and learn about that. And see, at the end of the case here, we've minimized the total energy of the eye. We've protected the cornea multiple times with this scholastic. We're able to get the lens in the capsule bag. It looks really nice. And this patient will have a beautiful outcome. Definitely going to put some triamcinolone in the AC at the end of the case. Why? To quell inflammation. I expect more inflammation because we've used a lot more phaco energy and more fluid through the eye. A little LRI there at the end, and that looks great. Now let's talk about MSICS. You gotta learn how to do this. And there are cases where yes, it's better than FACO. So for step one is making a good pyridomy, and we're starting here superiorly. Get a good pyridomy, almost um, as wide as the cornea, and doing some cautery to get some hemostasis. Now the incision is very important. You definitely wanna make an appropriate incision. So it's a incision that is trapezoidal in shape. And it's about half scleral depth. So going about two millimeters behind the limbus, one and a half, two, we'll make a half scleral depth groove. And then using the crescent blade, we're going to create a nice tunnel, a shelved incision. And notice how the tip of that crescent is going to go about a millimeter or so into the clear cornea as well. And again, really emphasizing that trapezoidal shape. That's great. Wash out that tripan blue dye. And this is an absolutely brunescent cataract, very dense cataract. And yes, I did this surgery in Beverly Hills. Fancy neighborhood, so even fancy patients get these types of cataracts. Now I can use the keratome to enter in that same tunnel. Pearl 2, make a big rexus, please, at least 5 millimeters. You have to bring the nucleus up through the rexus, so don't have a baby rexus. We've got a nice, generous rexus, in this case, at least 5 millimeters. That looks beautiful. Now when you do the hydro dissection, you may not see the fluid wave because the lens is so opaque, so do a little at a time, and it goes just to get that nucleus out of the capsule bag. There it is. And you want the entire nucleus up out of the capsule bag, so use your chopper or whatever instrument to rotate it around to get it above the capsule bag and even above the iris. Plenty of viscoelastic going in the eye. Now don't scrape the endothelium with the nucleus. So what we'll do here is I'll make an opposite paracentesis We'll now open it up to the full trapezoidal shape of the incision, and I'll push the nucleus out through the other side. So push the nucleus by making a paracentesis opposite the main incision. So here's our lens loop, and then we can push that nucleus, and we're staying away from the endothelium, and look how dense that thing is, pushing it out of the eye, and a good push, and there it is. No scraping of the endothelium at all. And there you go. Now the last thing is to suture the incision. Now, a lot of surgeons who have a lot of experience with MSICS don't suture the incision, and that's done primarily outside the U.S. Hey, if that's your preference, fine, but I like to put the sutures in, and you don't need much. This is just two loops of 10 nylon suture to close this incision, and you'll see it'll really give you a very nice result. I think putting the suture in, you'll minimize the amount of astigmatic shift over time. And these are 10 nylon. They're going to be buried, and they're going to be there forever. We're not worried about it. Now, you can see a little bit of iris prolapse here, so a better thing is sometimes is a bimanual cortex removal to help prevent that. And then we'll get the lens in the eye. And you can put a larger non-foldable lens, like a PMA lens. Here, we have only a foldable lens, so we'll inject here. This actually is a very high-power lens. Um, actually, low power lens for a high myopia is a two diopter lens for someone who's very myopic, 30 millimeter axial length. And you see at the end here, that's just a beautiful result. So please, I implore you, learn MSICS.